ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وخليله من خلقه وصفيه اما بعد فنسال الله عز وجل ان يجعلنا واياكم من المستمعين للقول والمتبعين احسنا وان يجعل ما نقوله ونسمعه حجة لنا لا علينا يوم الدين ثم اما بعد فالسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته For some people to just sit in the mosque means to be pious For some people being pious means to hold the Quran in their hands For some people to be pious indicates or rather to be pious means that they do a lot of dhikr For some people it's just talking about Islam for some people, it's just doing nothing but reflecting and pondering over the universe. For some people, it's presenting themselves as somebody who has knowledge of Islam. But one thing that a lot of people forget is that there is a dimension to Islam. If you do not hold on to it, no matter what you do in your spiritual or religious life, you will not be considered to be pious. When we look at the beginning of Islam, it was very straightforward. At the very beginning when Allah Jalla wa ala revealed these verses, they were not the verses of halal and haram. They were not the verses of praying. They were not the verses of fast. They were not the verses of zakat. They were not the verses about jihad. They were just verses about social interaction. Do you know why? Because when you worship Allah Jalla wa ala without fulfilling the rights of al-bashar, of the human being, then that worship will not be accepted by Allah Jalla wa Ala subhanahu wa ta'ala as you would wish. This is why at the very beginning you see Allah Jalla wa Ala kept on hammering on the importance of patience, on the importance of generosity, on the importance of courage, on the importance of loving Allah and loving the other, taking care of one another. All of that was there before even commanding the people to pray for Allah Jalla wa ala. The salah was what? Introduced in the way that we know it, according to al Hafid ibn Hajar, one year and a half before the Isra and Zakat, only two years after the Isra. What were the Muslims doing before that? What were the Muslims doing for more than nine to ten years? They were working on this, on their hearts and they were working on their tongues. They were working on their minds and they were working on their actions. And today, the way we worship Allah Jalla wa ala is a very self-centered way. We think as long as I do my five prayers per day, as long as I do my hajj and my umrah, as long as I fast, as long as I do this and that, then I'm a good Muslim. Muslim is not about being good to yourself. Muslim is about being good to others in the first place. That is, where being that true Muslim arises, it's so easy to be a selfish Muslim. And you know what the most difficult form of worship is? It is the worship where you have to give something from yourself where you have to be patient, where you have to visit people that don't like you, where you call somebody who doesn't call you, where you spend on those who do not spend on you, when you're patient even when you're on the truth, that you reply to bad with good. This is being a Muslim. And that's why the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he made it very clear when he said, وَإِنَّ صَاحِبَ الْخُلُقِ الْحَسَنِ لَيَبْلُغُ بِحُسْنِ خُلُقِهِ دَرَجَةَ الصَّائِمِ الْقَائِمِ and a Muslim with a good behavior. Towards whom? Towards yourself? <laughs> we always love ourselves. We don't have a problem giving ourselves what we like. A good behavior towards wife and husband. A good behavior towards child and parent. A good behavior even towards your enemy and friend. Everybody. Someone with a good behavior reaches the ranks of somebody who prays during the entire night and fasts during the entire day. And the Prophet said, وَإِنَّ سُوءَ الْخُلُقِ And a bad behavior corrupts the hasanat, like vinegar corrupts honey. 
and he takes away the sweetness of honey. Regardless of whether you like honey and vinegar together, but this is what the Prophet said. So that part of Islam is the most difficult one. And that's why the majority of people don't do it. And that's why Allah in Surah Al-Hujurat, He gave us a guideline. You know, the Quran is not a book to play with. <laughs> The Quran is not just like a book that happened to be there on the shelves and has to be read during Taraweeh and just for the Barakah on Friday. This here, what you have there, is the most important book in your life. But it is the book that we rather don't like to read too much because when we read it too much, we are continuously looking into a mirror telling that we don't look as good as we think we do. So what does Surah Al-Hujurat say? Surah Al-Hujurat, yani this part at least, is all about minds and all about tongues. All about minds and all about tongues. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked, Ya Rasulullah, ma akthar ma yudkhilun nas. And now, what is the major reason for people ending up in hell? He held yani his tongue between his index finger and his thumb and he said this here. That what you see here, this is what takes people to hell. The Prophet said, and somebody says a word which he doesn't deem to be important. Like a small tiny word, a small little gossip. There is no such a thing as a small little gossip. Everything is big. Huh. So he says, and the act, he says a small little thing. That he doesn't seem to be, doesn't seem to be important, and it drags him into hell for a distance of seventy years. Seventy years in hell because of one word. How many words have left our mouths? How many that were untrue, that were exaggerated, that were exaggerated, that were harmful? that were destroying people's lives and reputation. How many words came out of our mouths and we didn't know what the effect of these words were on that person. Maybe he got divorced because of your words. Maybe he lost his job because of your words. Maybe he lost his status and honor because of your words. Maybe he started to have a complex yani, because of your words. Maybe his what connection with Allah Jalla wa ala was disturbed because of your words. So if you just think of this, Barakallahu then the thing we go back to Allah with is definitely the fear of not knowing which words we still need to repent for. I'm going to wait one minute to see. Inshallah. It doesn't deconcentrate me. Oh, mashallah, you close the window and it stops. So, mashallah, that's a nice technique. So let us continue. So now in Surah Al-Hujarat 49, Allah Jalla wa ala, he gives these social guidelines. And, and, and there are some yani, parts in this ayah that really made me think, if, yani, and I should think much more, but it made me think. Allah Jalla wa ala says, Ya amanu. When Allah wants us all to do the same thing, He doesn't address us as people. Or Ya al insan, as you individual. No? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O believers. لا يسخر قوم من قوم عسى أن يكون خيرا منهم ولا نساء من نساء عسى أن يكون خيرا منهم. First part, O oh believers, do not mock other people, do not mock other groups, do not mock other men, do not mock other women, do not mock other people because maybe they are better than you. Today we still have this problem in some communities where we do not allow our daughter to marry to somebody from that area, from that city, from that family with that name, based on what? Based on what? You really think when you come in front of Allah, well, you're a ditty or a datty, and you are for hell just because of your name. You are not pious just because of your name. No, your daughter is not worthy of marrying that man because of the name of that man. Since when did that come into existence? Where did we get this from? You're not going to marry because you're from the East and I'm from the West. And then we have these jokes about other people. We Belgians, we have jokes about the French. We Belgians, we have jokes about people from Holland. And everybody has jokes about somebody else. Allah says don't. Not even for the sake of making people laugh because the Prophet has said, when you make people laugh by denigrating, humiliating others, 
then this is your ticket, that's not literally his words, then this is your ticket to hell. How many tickets do you want? So the Prophet Sallallahu so Allah Jalla wa Allah says, La yaskhar. Now, not even, ha, look at the way he drives. Yeah, really. And then we all, we laugh and we, we pretend it's not a form of gossip. Uh, we say, subhanAllah, yeah, the way he drives, I would not even, haram. You do not say a single thing about anybody that may be harmful or that may be denigrating or humiliating or it will drag you to hell. And that is what the Muslims were working on. Praying during the night is easy. Fasting on Monday and Thursday, easy. Fasting from the flesh of your brothers, difficult. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يسخر قوم من قوم عساء أن يكونوا خيرا منهم ولا نساء من نساء عساء أن يكون خيرا منهم ولا تلمزوا أنفسكم ولا تنابزوا بالألقاب And do not give yourselves nicknames. Do not insult يعني, one another with nicknames. Like for example, oh, you know the cross-eyed visit me, visited me today. Or the one who limps visited me today. The fat guy visited me today. The skin guy visited to me. Why are you giving nicknames? We always think it's funny. And then we go back to the days where we were at school together with that person. You say, do you know what we used to call him? Oh yes, tell us because we would like to know these things. I don't want to know how you used to call him because most likely it will not be a nice thing. I don't want to know. I know his name is Ahmed. I know his name is Zaid or Thabit or whoever. I don't want to know. When people talk to you and then they say, I don't want to gossip, but you say, stop right there. Don't drag me to hell with you. The moment people say, but that is where the filth will leave their mouths. I don't want to gossip, but everything which comes now after, but my friend will be gossip. So just stop talking. Yeah. So, وَلَا تَلْمِزُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ وَلَا تَنَابَزُوا بِالْأَلْقَابِ بِئْسَ لِسْمُ الْفُسُقْ بَعْدَ الْإِيمَانِ How bad it is, says Allah, that you describe somebody as a sinner while he has believed. Is he sin your problem? Is it your problem that, that people are sinning? Your problem is that you are sinning. And I don't mean you, maybe you don't sin. I do, many people do. Is it your problem, the sins of people? Do you really have the time to talk about what the people are doing? When you come back to Allah, who do you think you will talk about with you? About this and that man? About the man standing in front of him, shaking, shivering, crying, tears of blood. Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, I was so busy with people that I forgot about myself. You want to be that person? I don't. So don't. Don't mention anything bad and take this with you and turn that into your path, into your life. You do not gossip about anybody. That is what this ayah is saying. And the reason why Allah said, yani, spoke to the people of Iman, because the further away you are from these gossips, the, fur the stronger it is in proof, or the, the stronger the proof is of your faith. The stronger your faith is, the less you're occupied with people. What will talking about people add to your life? Nothing. So now in the next ayah, which I will discuss in the second part of, of the khutbah, we will look at one of the other things, where Allah speaks about false accusations, and where Allah speaks of the gestures of spying on people. And then we will see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says at the end. If you do not give up on these things, what may happen to you? So we ask Allah Jalla or to me, may Allah Jalla wa Allah make this beneficial. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa usalli wa usallim ala Rasulina Kareem wa ala ahlihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Alhamdulillahi kathiran kama amar wa salatu wa salamu ala khayri wa afdali al-bashar wa jami'i man iqtafa al-athar wa ba'd. Allah Jalla wa Allah says, and all believers stay away from a lot of suspicion. What is suspicion? Suspicion is every claim for which you cannot provide a proof. البينة على المدعي واليمين على من أنكر said the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he said the proof has to be provided by the one claiming something so if somebody comes to you chit chatting small talk and about people or about anybody or anything a group of people an individual it doesn't matter and they speak and speak if they do not provide a proof then you have to tell them to keep quiet because then they are the source of fitna. But where, who needs to provide a proof, by the way? 
It is only in front of a judge. Now people take these verses and say, I want to see the proof, I want to see proof. If there is a problem and there is a proof, it is for a judge, the Qadi, to see a proof. I'm not a court. I don't, I, I don't even want to know, I don't want to see, I don't want to hear. I am occupied with my own life. I cannot even turn my own life into a full Islamic life. So why do you want me to listen to what other people have to say about other people? So this, the false accusations are everything for which somebody cannot provide a proof. Even if it were your own parent that claims something about someone, you respect them as your parent. But you respect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's verses more and you say, I am not allowed to listen. Ya salam. You think listening doesn't harm you? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, when somebody is accused in, in the presence of you, when somebody is accused in the presence of yourself and you don't stand up, for the right of your brother to be defended in his absence, then Allah will expose your sins on the day of judgment. That is when you listen and when you don't stop people. But very often the most tasty dishes are those who are filled with the meat of our brothers. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He makes it very clear at the end of the verse and He says, would you like to eat literally the flesh of your brother? Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said about this verse, people who were falsely accusing people, meaning accusations without proofs. They will be presented the body, a replica, the body of the brother they were accusing and talking about, and it will be told, Kul lahma akhik. Kul lahma akhik. Yani, eat the flesh of your brother. Now, with Allah Jalla wa it's about atom weights. So there is no such a thing like, oh, it was just a small, tiny gossip, a small, tiny accusation. No, no, everything is big. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he made that very clear when he was asked, Ya Rasulullah, ayyu dhambi a'adham. Ya Rasulullah, which sin is the biggest of all? And there are many ahadith, but this is one of them. He said, falsely accusing people, falsely accusing people, falsely testifying, falsely accusing people. He kept on going all the time. He didn't stop. Imagine the Prophet ﷺ saying this for an hour in a row. False accusations, false accusations, be accusing people without any proof. He kept on going until Abu Bakr said, فَقُلْنَا لِأَنفُسِنَا لِيَلَيْتَهُ سَكَتَا اَيْ رَحْمَةً بِهِ صَلَى الله عليه وسلم. He kept on repeating it until we told ourselves, why did we even ask this question? If only he would remain silent. Yani because they fell for him. Because they saw that it was so deep. Yani these emotions went so deep in his heart that, he, that they wanted him to stop f from talking. And that's why the Prophet وسلم, like in the Silsilat al-Sahihah, when he came to his companions, he said, لا تذكروا أصحابي إلا بخير. Do not mention my companions unless it is something positive. Because I don't want anything in my heart towards them. Like you can say, yeah, I listen, but I don't believe. That's a lie. You listen, you don't believe. If you don't believe, you don't listen. Mm. When somebody tells you something and you listen, from your ears, it goes to your mind and from your mind, it goes to your heart. Even if you don't believe it, next time, there will be a stain on that brother whose yani, honor was being disgraced by the one you were listening to. I don't want to think bad or evil about my brother. So keep your gossip for yourself. Keep your accu accusations to yourself. That is what we say to people. And then subhanAllah, when you protect your ear, you protect your heart. And when you protect your heart, you protect your jannah. And when you protect your jannah, you protect your looking at Allah Jalla wa ala in the highest degrees of paradise. I ask Allah Jalla wa ala to make this beneficial, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma ahdina fi man hadayt, wa aafina fi man aafayt, wa tawallana fi man tawallayt, wa barik lana fi man aatayt, wa qina asrif anna sharra ma qadayt, fa innaka taqdi wa la yuqda alayk, fa innahu lan ya'izza man aadayt, wa lan yadhilla man waadayt, tabarakta rabbana wa ta'alayt. Allahumma la tajal al-dunya akbara hammina, wa la mablaga ilmina, wa la ilal nari masirana, wa jal al-jannata hiya darana wa qararana wa mustaqarana ya Rabbana. Allahumma jal khayri yawmina yawmina qadayt, 
الخلق فيه واجعل بلقائنا في هذه الدنيا صوم ولقاء معكم ربي عيدا اللهم لا تؤاخذنا بما فعل السفهاء منا اللهم ارنا في الظالمين يوما اسودا دائما ابدا اللهم كن مع المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم رد المسلمين الى دينك ردا جميلا اللهم اجعل محبتنا لمحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اقوى من محبتنا لانفسنا لا اله الا انت سبحانك اني كنت من الظالمين واقيم الصلاه